Hey guys! At kamusta mga Pinoy Rangers out there? My name is Chris and this is Ranger Force Roundup. So guys, this is Jason. He is my Super Sentai Power Rangers correspondent. Because as you can see from the title of this episode, it's Q-Ranger time. For those who don't know, Jason is a highly <laughs> sought after wow. scriptwriter. Wow. For those in the Philippines, you guys would know most of the shows that he writes, but I hope so. The most popular one is Encantadia, which just Ooh. ended. Another tidbit is half of the things uh, you watch on my channel was written by him. So, Jason, yes. Let us talk about a topic that practically everyone has been commenting. That's nice. So, first of all, what is this show about? I think the closest comparison I can make with Q Ranger is Go Kaiger's season, where this evil empire is taking over the whole universe. With Q Ranger, the whole universe has been conquered and a rebellion has started. When we start, there's three Q Rangers who are already fighting the good fight. They're looking for six more because legend says there are nine Q Rangers. So basically, that's the, that's the premise. There's a rebel force that wants to defeat the evil empire so they can set the universe free. It's kind of like Star Wars. Let us enumerate the characters. who these guys are. Okay, so Red Ranger is Lucky, the luckiest guy in the universe. We have Hammy, the Green Ranger, who has the powers of a chameleon. We have the Yellow Ranger, Espada, whose constellation is a swordfish. Okay. Which is really weird. You have Champ, the Black Ranger, who is a robot bull. Oh, the big guy. The big guy. The big guy. The, the one with the armor when he's morphed. You have Garu, the wolfman, who is wo a wolf. <laughs> you have Naga, the silver ranger, who has the power to like stop people on their, on their tracks. And then you have Balance, the gold ranger, who is... I don't know how to describe him. He likes to steal. He likes to have fun. He likes birthdays. Okay. He likes a lot of things that... Shouldn't be shouldn't liked. Not, not shouldn't be like, but shouldn't be the priority okay. of, of people. But he's a robot, so I guess that that excuses them. Okay. You have the Orange Ranger Stinger, who starts out actually as a villain. They think he's a villain. Ah, uh, like the typical the, sixth the, ranger. The typical sixth but ranger. Is is he considered the sixth ranger? No, because he's Ish. part of the core. He's part team. of the core. He's part of the okay. core nine. It's revealed later on that he's actually the first two ranger that got recruited and he has been um, pretending to be a bad guy so he could infiltrate Dark Matter, the ranger that's closest to my heart Wow! All because right. of the voice actress. Oh, okay! So the pink ranger is Raptor, I forgot the number, but Raptor and three digits. Oh. Um, she's the pink ranger. She is voiced by uh, Mao Ichimichi. Yeah, for so, kids. for those who don't know, who is Mao? Mao is Gokai Yellow. Oh my it's god. Luka. She has the spunk of Gokai Yellow. Raptor is the pilot of Orion, which is the ship of the Q-Rangers. It's basically okay. their headquarters. She's always dreamed about wanting to be part of the adventure, but she's always relegated to just stay in the, in the spaceship. And then she gets her wish. She's the final Q-Ranger. Oh. And she has wings, so she can fly. Because oh. she's the pilot. <laughs> and the thing is, legend says there are only nine. But there's another ranger who has mysterious powers because they don't know where it comes from. Which is um, their captain. The, my favorite name out of this whole series. His well, name is... His name is Xiaolong Bao. I don't know if over time... Uh, I, I watch overtime subs. Yeah. So I don't know if they had fun with it. With I just had Xiaolong Bao a few weeks ago. You guys should have more Xiaolong Bao. It's really good. Yeah. It's Chinese food. Okay. It's Chinese food. Yeah. And I'm Chinese. <laughs> He's the purple ranger, the dragon ranger. It kind of takes place of the sixth ranger in a way. Okay. But at the same time, the mentor ranger? Like, uh... So there, that's ten of them. And then a kid pops up and uh, says he wants to be a Q ranger like them. There, it's, it's a whole episode of how he discovers that he has power. So mm -hmm. he's Persa Minor and his power is Ursa Major, which turns him giant. So that's the... 11 rangers All so right. far. So what makes it unique? Toei and Bandai usually experiment with what makes a Sentai team. 
off the top of my head, I remember Gekki Ranger, and you have Go Busters, which instead of spandex, you have like yeah, it was weapon. right after uh, it was right anniversary after uh, season, which was Go Kai. Yeah, yeah, with Q Ranger, I think the experiment is having this like large cast. There's focus on the Red Ranger, but unlike previous seasons, especially in Tokyujer, Ninja, and Kyoryujer, which was really red centric, this one isn't as red centric. In this season, there's a lot of focus on the other characters as well. It's been talked about on on the internet yeah. that Bandai America actually had a hand. Oh yeah, I in, read about that. Yeah, in creating the costumes or and the toys as well. And the toys. Uh, well, mostly I think the the designs because design. they've been focusing a lot on toys in the recent in recent years. You had Ninja which had the Ninja Stars. You have Tokyo with the trains, and you have Kyoryuji with the batteries. With Cure Ranger, I think they just like throw everything in the wall and see what's stuck. <laughs> so, right. It kind of feels more like an anniversary season yeah. than the the previous season. So since we've had uh, 15 episodes already, I think yeah. it's a good chance for us to summarize what has been happening in the world of Q Ranger. They've had arcs. Uh, since the beginning, the first arc was forming the team. I mentioned before that they started with three Q Rangers. Uh, the first episode added two uh, Rangers to the team, uh, red and blue, and then the second episode added another couple of members. Yeah. Um, so the first arc was just forming the team, and then as with teams with a lot of members, you have opposing personalities, mm. contrasting personalities, which I kind of like. Because usually you have a fu- fully formed team and you have one outsider. With yeah. this one, they really had to learn how to work together, how to get along with each other. So that was the second arc, getting to know each other. And then this, the following arc was the missions. They started going out, rescuing the planets from dark matter. Okay. The thing with Q Ranger though, they have the gimmick of uh, only sending five rangers mm, to every mission. They have okay. a, a roulette to cool. say which five will go to a. Oh, it's a by chance. By it's by chance. Oh, cool. <laughs> well, by chance. By chance. <laughs> There are a couple of episodes, I think, where the chance that they might not get to be part of a mission actually dictates what happens in the mission. Okay. But then there are episodes when five gets chosen to like go to Earth and defeat this certain monster, and then a couple other rangers or three other rangers would go to a different planet and. Do something else there. Now they're starting to get into the meat of the story of defeating the dark matter. They've introduced assassins into the show. We have Ik again, Scorpio, and a girl I can't remember. <laughs> so Scorpio, I heard, has a uh, connection. Yes, connection to one of the Rangers. He's the brother of Orange Ranger Stinger. So now they have a clear goal in mind, which is to defeat dark matter, mm-hmm. set the universe free. But to do that, they have they they have a MacGuffin that they're trying to find the Argo. Oh. Which is a ship that's going to get built if they combine the powers of three spheres, three of the Q globes. So that's currently the goal of the the group is to form the Argo so they could defeat Dark Matter. Mm-hmm. But um, along the way, two of them, the Orange Ranger and the Black Ranger, went on a separate mission so they could look for Stinger's brother, Scorpio. So episode fifteen actually ended with Stinger and Scorpio going face to face, and Stinger realizing that Scorpio got. Really corrupted and turned into a monster. And I heard, well, it's a, still a rumor, but I heard that they're planning on making this one the next Power Rangers. Is that there are rumors? Rumors. rumors. There are talks on the internet that after Super yeah, Ninja Steel, like Power Rangers will adapt Cure Ranger instead of. And I think it'll be perfect you know, because kids like space, and we've had a yes. space season. And there will be a lot of toys. That's a good way for us to dive into this. Super Sentai season. season. So thanks, Jason. I hope I didn't turn off anyone. <laughs> It's a really good show. I, I I'm hooked from him. I will live vicariously. Thank you. <laughs> through him. Thanks again, guys. Please subscribe. It will really mean a lot to me, and it will mean a lot to him because he writes a lot of the stuff you watch on this channel. Peace. <laughs> See you guys next time. And this was our Ranger Force roundup. Bye bye.